In this study, we were interested to investigate the question of the effect of blood pressure lowering treatment when blood pressure itself is not very high or in fact is normal, and also to assess whether the blood pressure lowering effect differ in people who have a known cardiovascular disease and people who don't. This is to address the long-standing controversy around the effect of blood pressure lowering, which has been interpreted very widely and differently across the world, with some people recommending that there should be no treatment in people whose blood pressure is less than 140, and others saying that treatment should continue um, to low levels. And the way we investigated this that was we used the data from the collaboration called Blood Pressure Lowering Treatment Trials Collaboration, and that is a collaboration of all major randomized clinical trials of blood pressure lowering. And to this particular analysis, uh, 48 randomized clinical trials contributed data, overall compromi comprising about 350,000 um, individuals. This makes it the largest data set ever of randomized um, evidence. Um, and by having such a large data set, we were able to divide the population into different subgroups and to investigate whether the effect of the treatment is different between them. Um, so the population was firstly divided into two groups based on presence or absence of um, cardiovascular disease at baseline. Um, and then secondly, it, each of those subgroups were further divided into seven categories of uh, baseline blood pressure. Um, and we could go down to a level of less than 120 millimeter mercury systolic and he still had substantial number of people in that um, subgroup. There were still thousands of people in that subgroup and that were included. And, and then when we investigated what the effect of um, the treatment is on cardiovascular outcomes, major cardiovascular outcomes, but also its component, stroke, heart failure, ischemic heart disease and stroke, um, we found no evidence um, that baseline blood pressure itself modified the treatment effect, no presence or absence of cardiovascular disease. This obviously has major implications for our understanding of how antihypertensive medications should be used. Um, and it essentially calls for uh, viewing those medications um, as treatment for modifying cardiovascular risk, irrespective of what an individual's blood pressure is, or regardless of whether they have had a previous history of cardiovascular disease or not. Um, and that suggests, that doesn't mean that everyone should be treated, uh, but that challenges the current notion that those medications are only to be used in people who have a very high blood pressure.